Hey folks, Craig Lovati here with the Houston Museum of Natural Science. I'm on a field trip today to the St. Arnold Brewing Company. I'm inside their beer lab. This is the Quality Assurance Lab. Now, most of us wouldn't think about it that a craft beer company actually needs one of these guys to play with beakers and such and make sure things are good. This is Drew Russi, and Drew, you just play with beer all day. <laughs> That's a, uh, you know, on a fun day, I say I'm a professional beer taster. Uh -huh. uh, on the less fun days, it's, you know, a little more Excel sheets and less fun things. But uh, we do do a lot of cool science in here. I like to say it kind of breaks down into four categories. There's the biology side, so there's microplating that we do on several different media, some for wild yeast, some for wild bacteria, none of which we really want in the beer. Um, outside of the micro, there's also the chemistry side, so we'll test for IBUs, SRMs, sometimes things like carbohydrates or polyphenols, uh, things like that. And then there's also the fun side, which is the sensory side. So that's where we take our beer, taste it. Um, we've usually had three brewers or sensory panelists taste every batch, every run. Uh, before it leaves for the distributor and before it leaves the distributor to the consumer. So uh, we've definitely tasted everything before it gets to you. Um, and, you know, then it's not science if you don't write it down. So there's a whole lot of data logging, um, a lot of time at a computer, um, typing it all in. So now we obviously know that brewing beer, that's chemistry. That's, you know, ancient chemistry. We've been doing that for thousands of years. But a lot of people don't know that you're still doing that today. That's what the Quality Assurance Lab is, to make sure that the product that's going out is perfect, tip-top, and it's clean for everybody. Sure. Uh, I would say it's, I'm a biologist, so full disclosure, uh, I would say it's a fine mixture of biochemistry, uh, because there is, while there is absolutely a lot of chemistry going on, uh, personally, I love yeast, so um, we wouldn't have beer without yeast, and it was actually only fairly, you know, in the history of people making beer, yeast is a fairly recent discovery, but uh, you know, there are living organisms that turn the sugar water into the beer that we enjoy. Uh, we use a lot of agricultural products, so grain, hops, um, these things are subject to climate uh, and changes thereof. So if there's a drought one year, then sometimes the product can change and you know, we gotta make sure that we're making the same product. So we'll find out kind of get from the suppliers what it changes they expect to see, we'll brew with it, and then make changes accordingly. Because that can change the taste, the yep. flavor, everything Absolutely. involved in that. And Absolutely. that can just a little, I sound smart right now, a little molecule off right. can change the way it tastes in your mouth. Right, and it's not the maltsters doing, it's not, you know, that's just the way it grew that year, you know, that's just the way it is. And it's a new product on the shelf at that point. Yeah, so well, it can be, but yeah. so that's where we come in to make sure that we're making the same product each time. So things taste the same every yep. time you crack open a can, you get poured a pint, it all tastes the same. Right. So if all of a sudden, say, IBUs are really high on a hop that we're using, or when we brew with it, the alpha acids are creating a high IBU. So then we see that and we know that we need to reduce the, um, alpha, the amount of hops we're using so that the bitterness isn't so high to keep everything in spec. A lot of people wouldn't realize that there's somebody like you at a brewery. They just assume that it's, you know, it's a bunch of guys, girls, you know, making beer, having a good time. Not that you're not having a good time here, but a lot of people just don't understand that you can, you know, major in science and actually work at a place like this. Yeah, absolutely. So I will say, I mean, there was a time before St. Arnold had a full lab. Um, and at that time, the brewers did most of everything what you see in here. Um, it just got to a point where they felt like they wanted to hire someone with a science education to um, take over for that. Would you say this is like an emerging field too? I mean, on some level, it's a financial decision. Like, so we were able to commit funds to quali like to a quality control lab. Once you get to a bigger echelon, I guess, if you want to call it that, a brewery like St. Arnold, you know, up and coming, it's the oldest one in Houston. You guys are on this upward trajectory where it behooves you guys to have a chemist here, a biologist. Yeah, at a certain point, it just was helpful to not burden the brewers with it and have people dedicated to, you know, running the science part of the brewery. Now, what's your science background for the kids out there that are watching that are going? Oh, cool, mom and dad, hey, I wanna work at a brewery. Uh, so my, <laughs> my personal background was actually, I was a zoology undergrad major, which no one knew what it was when I went to a career fair. So <laughs> for graduate school, I did biology. Uh, because people knew what biology was. Uh, so I got a PhD in biology and then just started applying to breweries. I was a, a longtime home brewer during grad school, really liked beer and just saw where there was the biology in beer and started applying to breweries. Now this, this the lab, when we walked in here, I'd never seen this lab before. I've been to St. Arnold plenty of times. 
I didn't know that this was like, this is like, this looks serious. This is like a forensic lab, right? I mean, like, this is like some CSI stuff going on in here. There is a little bit. Uh, we do have PCR, uh, some microbiology going on over in the far incubator. Uh, fancy microscope, but it's got the dust cover on it right now. Uh, it doesn't look that far off from like our, our paleo lab we have at the museum, except there's just no fossil bones here. Yeah that we know of. This incubator is actually our force age incubator. That's so, an incubator? Yes. Okay. So um, what this is for, so every beer we produce, every if we have a batch that's canned and bottled, we get a six pack of a can and the bottle line. Those are all tasted uh, by brewers and uh, sensory panel. And uh, But one of those from the six pack will go into this force age incubator. So it holds at about 40 degrees Celsius and this will accelerate it's approximating the aging of the beer. So we're trying to destroy the beer as fast as possible to get an idea of how it might age. So, like so shelf stability, so how it's exactly. gonna be on the shelf. Exactly, yeah. so if there's gonna be a problem, hopefully we can catch it a week out, a week out as opposed to three months out. It's yeah. not exactly one to one, but it's the best, you know, best tool that we have for approximating the aging process. We have to do that sometimes if I'll interview like um, a smaller person at the museum, like I always have to make sure like, cause you look at the camera then it's like, I look giant next to her, so. I love reading about the Fast and the Furious movies with Vin Diesel and The Rock and all of the <laughs> tricks they have to do to make them look like they're the same height. Cause he's like, cause Vin Diesel's smaller, obviously The Rock is The Rock the is Rock. actually large yeah. and Vin Diesel is really tiny. <laughs> now we're in here in one corner of the lab. This reminds me of high school chemistry class. There's the eye wash, there's all this kind of stuff over here. What is this thing? Looks like I'd, I would buy it at a certain store. Yeah, so this is our, uh, this is a distillation setup for measuring VDKs. So it's acronym for a fancy word for diacetyl. Uh, ultimately, that's what we're concerned about. And what diacetyl is, is basically popcorn butter. It's the okay. same aroma. Uh, it's a very natural product of fermentation. Some yeast strains produce more than others. Uh, and that's- You don't want the popcorn butter flavor in the beer. It's okay at first, okay. but eventually you want it to be cleaned up. So it's a natural part of fermentation, and then as uh, yeast kind of picks and chooses what they want to eat and turn into alcohol, they'll eventually say, okay, yeah, now we want the diacetyl and bring in the, uh, those precursors, and they'll remove it from solution. Um, and then so eventually you have a clean beer that no longer has the diacetyl aroma in it. So, uh, whenever we brew lager, or kolsch, uh, or a new beer, we put it in what's called a diacetyl rest. So once it is close to terminal gravity, we close the tank and basically let the yeast go to work and clean it up. So uh, when it first gets terminal gravity, if you rush a beer, you can get a lot of this popcorn aroma in a beer and then we let it sit. And then once we think it's clear, we'll actually test it and get a number and make sure that our uh, Diacetyl levels are below threshold. And that's the stuff that's going on out there in the big tanks, Yeah, right? we'll go and pull a sample from a yeah. tank and bring it in here and uh, run it through this column, yeah. Wow. All right, so now I'm hanging out with Danielle. She's a lab technician here. You have a background in forensic chemistry? Yes. Like CSI type stuff, like I'm crime scene stuff, but you're here at the brewery yes. doing that. Indeed. So what does, that in, what does that entail? Over here, your job is a little bit different than Drew. It looked like you have like the the spinner and the, I'm using technical terms now. Of course. The spinner. Centrifuge. So, centrifuge, sorry. <laughs> so exactly what do you do? So I do a lot of our, basically almost all of our chemical testing on our in process and then finished beer and then a little bit of biology, but I make sure that our raw materials don't have anything weird going on that'll affect our beer later, like when filtering um, or at shelf life, and then also making sure like I do our VDKs to make sure there's none of that in our beer or to clear it so it can go to the next step. Um, testing for bitterness, our IBUs, the color, our SRM, and then different nutrients for say when we are making seltzers to make sure it will ferment correctly and things like that. So seltzer, it's like, it's a big hot new thing now, but it's also harder to make? Yeah, it's just different than making beer. Okay. So just for a brewery to adjust and make seltzer, it's just a much, just a different process that we had to kind of figure yeah. out. Um, and Drew and I helped through testing to make sure there was nitrogen, which is what kind of our seltzers eat, Got since it. they don't have the same materials that beer does. What is your science background? I know your forensic chemistry, but I mean, did you ever think one day you'd be working at a brewery? No, so my background is in forensic chemistry, but then I have three minors in biology, math, and science, or in psychology, excuse me. It's so <laughs> I um, interned at a crime lab, and it was really interesting. I enjoyed working in the lab, but it was a little morbid, so I began looking for less sad jobs mm -hmm. and more fun ones. <laughs> 
um, and realized that I could work in a lab at a brewery and yeah. that this was something I was qualified for. So I just started applying and yeah, my degree is very chemistry focused. So that's where it came in handy for this role. And as we were talking to Drew, I, there's a lot of, you know, the lay person out there who just buys the beer off the shelf or goes and gets a pint. They don't know that there's somebody like Danielle or, or like Drew in the background here making yeah. sure that everything is tip top. Yeah. yeah. What would you do without us? Yeah. Science is everywhere. This is a centrifuge, not a spinner thingy. <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to Danielle and Drew for showing us around the quality assurance lab here at St. Arnold Brewing Company. Guys, there's science everywhere, including in your beer. Hey folks, Craig Lavati here with the Houston Museum of Natural Science, actually on a field trip to the St. Arnold Brewing Company. St. Arnold Brewing Company, right? Yes. I always get that wrong. I always try to say. All right. Singular. I've been writing about this place for a thousand years and I still get it wrong. Yeah. Okay. We, it's, we often get St. Arnold's. Yeah. There's just people that, yeah. St. Arnold. I learned my lesson that it's just St. Arnold because when I was a reporter, I used to always mess it up and then would text me or email me and be like, you messed up. Yep. One of the local news channels called us St. Arnie's. That was fun. Ooh, who was that? Who was it? I don't recall. There we go. <laughs> who was it?